Well, I want to welcome you back to the 11th hour today. Well, we were here at the 11th hour, and we've been here this whole time. You know, I, I believe that this program was tried to be hindered today because of the content of it. And um, once again, I want to thank all of our partners for staying with us. You are absolutely the best. There's just no doubt about it. All around the world. And um, you were loved here and you're prayed for here at, um, at this ministry. Amen. Well, I want to, uh, before we do this, let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord God, that your word is all powerful, almighty, that you have not held back anything from us, Lord, that you have given us full, full, Lord disclosure of what we need to know you have you have opened your word to us and lord i ask you today to give us eyes to see and ears to hear that we can learn your word together as a family in jesus name amen amen you know um, in matthew 24 24 this is what the scripture says it says for there shall arise false christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it was possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now, in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 through 9, it says that it will be lying wonders. Now, you know, I, uh, the Lord started talking to me about this, and... Um, I want to take you back to a prophecy in Genesis chapter three that the Lord himself gave the Lord himself gave this prophecy. Now, this is, this is so powerful. I want you to, to really catch hold of this. If you got your physical Bible with you, underline it, underline this and maybe make notes on something so that you remember this in Genesis three fifteen, the Lord himself said to the serpent, he said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. And it, her seed, shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. This was a prophecy. Think about it. It was a prophecy not only of the crucifixion to come when the seed of the woman, Jesus, would step on the head of the serpent. But it's also a prophecy that reveals some very important insight to us. And the insight is this. Look at this now. It says, and it, he said, I shall put enmity or war between you and the woman and between thy seed. So the Lord revealed to us that the serpent has a seed, that there is a seed here that, that, the, uh, that the woman's seed will do battle with. This is actually in this prophecy of an, an eye-opening revelation that the serpent had a seed. Now, we have to start looking at where that seed was and where it is now. And this is what I believe the Lord wanted this program to be about. He started talking to me about it yesterday. And then I think that's why we fought everything we did today. Now, I want you to go over to Isaiah chapter 14. And I want us to look at that now. We've got to locate the serpent seed, how it got here, and where it is now. And you're about to learn why all this political upheaval is going on around the world. Now, I'm in a location that nobody knows where I'm at right now. And um, uh, we're going through the fortress, but I'm coming to you live. This is live. Now, the praise and worship wasn't live, but this is live right now. I'm talking to you. Now, I want you to see this. In Isaiah 14, verse 12, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Now, what you're actually looking at is a song. 
This is a song. You say, well, how do we know that? I want to tell you a story now. In the world before Adam was created, there, when God got ready to create, he, he, was, he created this whole wonderful, beautiful place. The heavens and the earth, Genesis 1 declares. And so when he got everything created, he anointed a certain angelic being, a certain angel named Lucifer, which was the light bearer. He anointed him. Now, he's called here the son of the morning. Now, this gives you a clue as to who he is. Jesus is called the bright and morning star, and Lucifer's called the son of the morning. In other words, he was Jesus' personal angel. He was the word's personal angel. <clears throat> That's why he was anointed to bring the revelations to the earth. Now, Ezekiel 28 will be a reference you're going to want. In Ezekiel 28, it talks about this. It says there are stones of fire that, that, uh, that this, uh, this angel walked up and down in the stones of fire. And what that is, is it's the revelations of God. These stones of fire are revelation stones, revelation knowledge. And this angelic being who was anointed with the anointing, uh, to walk up and down in these stones of fire and find certain revelations. Now, the scripture says in Ezekiel 28 that he had, instead of a heart, he had tambourines built into his being. He didn't have a heart. He had a timbrels that was built inside him. He had these shofars of these pipes that came from his body, and he was a living instrument. He was a living instrument because it had to be done in frequencies, harmonies. All of this, this had to be established through sound and light. And so the light bearer would go up and down and find a revelation. And he would come to the earth and lift himself up to the center of the earth. And when he did, these tambourines would begin to play out a beat inside his body. And these shofars would sound with the sounds of frequencies and music. And in those days, there were thin metallic plates that went all the way around the earth. That if a sound hit those plates, it would carry all the way around the earth. And it would carry that sound. And he would sing prophetically the revelation he had found in the stones of fire. And when he would do this, then it would begin to be established in the earth. It would match the frequencies in the planet. And, and all of these frequencies and sounds, he would match them and go inside those sounds with these prophetic songs. And the word of God would start to bring forth. And Jeremiah 4 says there were, there were fruitful places. There were cities that were built. There were uh, mountains. There were birds. But there was no man. There wasn't a man. This was a time before the man. And then one day, when this light bearer would, was this, this living instrument, prophetic, angelic being, anointed with this prophetic anointing, because the scripture says the word, Jesus, created all things. And so he was there in the beginning, uh, after the earth was created, taking the word him, from him, the word himself, and singing the revelation. And it would create and it would establish and it would bring forth. Well, the day came, he's walking up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. And when he did, he saw the revelation. The next one he was to bring forth, the next one he was to take inside himself and lift himself up to the center of the earth and begin to sing this revelation was the song of the man that was coming. It was the song of the man. And when he did, he saw this song. And listen, and you can find out what the song was all about. It was the song. It says, it was in this where he said, you said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. It was the song of God's family <clears throat> and their ability to come. He was to sing up into the heaven so the whole creation could hear it. 
that they will be able to, man will ascend into heaven. He will be able to exalt his authority above the angels, the stars of God. He was going to be above angels and below God. And he saw this and he would be able to sit in the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north beside God. He was God's family, God's son. God was creating a family. And then he says this, he said uh, he would be able to ascend above the heights of the clouds, not just stay on the earth, but he would be able to go up above the clouds and visit God. And God could come to the earth and visit him. And when he saw what kind he would be, watch now, look at this in verse 14 of Isaiah uh, 14. I will be like the most high. The song was to continue and all of this. And then he would sing. I will be like, or they will be like the most high as saying what they will be in his image, in his likeness, in his image, in his likeness. And some of these Hebrew words here where it talks about throne and all of this in here, some of the Hebrew meanings is this, get this flesh, flesh pot, flesh covered crimson. It was talking about the man. It was the song of the man. And when that angel saw the song of the man, the fruitful places were was prepared. The, the cities were prepared. The birds were here. Everything was beautiful, ready for the man to come. And when it came time to sing the song of the man, and he saw his position, he couldn't stand it. And Ezekiel 28 talks to us about how it filled him with violence. It filled him with violence. And then we find the eighth Psalm, how he went and he went to the court of Jehovah, the court of heaven, and he protested against the man. I hope you're listening to me today. I want to get this across. This is so powerful because you're about to find out where we are. In the eighth Psalm, and we know this is an angel talking because Hebrews 2 quotes the eighth Psalm but says it was an angel speaking, an angel testify, or the Greek says earnestly protesting. He's in the court of Jehovah. When he found this song, he said, oh, Jehovah, that's the word Lord there, our master, how excellent is your name or your authority in all the earth who has set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. He's talking about a man. He said, out of the mouth of babes. He said, I see that, that this creature is going to, you're going to visit him. You've ordained strength in his mouth that by the time his offspring can suck the breast, they can make a sound that will stop your enemies in their tracks and stop a bad harvest from coming. The avenger. He said, what is this? He said, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you've ordained. And then you see why he's protesting. What is man that thou art mindful of him or the son of man that you would visit him? You made him a little lower than the angels. And that word angel there is the word God. He said, you've made him a little lower than God. And has crowned him with glory and honor. And you made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You've have you put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, and the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. And then he closed the court case with this O Jehovah, our master, how excellent is your authority in all the earth. He protested. When he found that song. And then when it came time to sing the song. And he knew he had to sing this song. Folks, you've got to listen to me. Now I'm giving you some kind of spiritual insight. That I, I mean this is, this is strong. When it came time for him to sing the song. He lifted himself up. To the center of the earth. He was ready. The music started playing. The timbrels begin to beat. Everything began to happen. 
The creation was ready. Couldn't you see them? The creation was ready to listen to the sweet voice as God was about to give his next revelation through the song that would resonate through the earth. All the molecules, all the atoms, all the electrons, everything. And you know, it's amazing when you begin to think about it, how, how uh, the electrons and things like that don't really show up and respond until a man looks at them. And then they show up all at once. They were ready. Everything set their ears to hear, their eyes to see. Ready. Can you see them? Can you see the creation? It's ready. Even on the levels of atoms and so forth, everything's ready. And they're sitting there. And Lucifer, the son of the morning, opened his mouth. And what would have normally been a beautiful voice to sing this song. For man will ascend into, into uh, heaven. He will exalt his throne above the stars, the angels of God. He will have this. He will be this. What came out of his mouth was vanity. The song was anointed. The revelation was real. The tune was ready. The earth was ready. And then all at once, Lucifer turned the song to himself. And he said, I will ascend into the heavens. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. He turned the song and it was anointed. That's why he's mentioned in Ezekiel 28 as the anointed cherub that covereth. He was anointed. And he turned the song of man into a song of an angel. And when he began to sing the song, he started trying to turn an angelic creature into a human being. And the earth couldn't stand the strain. It couldn't happen. And when that hybrid seed was sown into the earth, because some of these words are flesh, flesh pots, flesh covered crimson. He was saying he would be flesh covered crimson or he would create flesh covered crimson. He was sowing a seed, a hybrid seed. And Jesus said in Matthew 13 that angels are reapers. So he was going to sow a seed that he could reap. Can you see it? Am I too deep? Is everybody with me today? Are you listening? If you're with me, let me know. Say, say, I'm, I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it. See, what's happening is, is that this was what was going on. When it came time, he had, he had sang the song of the fruitful place. He had sang the song of the cities. He had sang the song of all the, the birds in the heavens. He had sang the song, the beautiful song, preparing the earth for God's family. And then he saw the song of the man in the stones of fire. And he didn't sing it about the man. He didn't sing it about God's family. He sung it about himself. And when he did, Jeremiah 4, well, first of all, we'll read verse 15. The pronouncement, the harvest, God in his system of harvest, all capitals, Lord, Yahweh, pronounced the judgment. And he said immediately, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. And then verse 16, watch this now. Speaking of the seed of the serpent that would come. Watch what he said. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man? that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms. Here the seed had been sown. Harvest had been pronounced. That when the day comes, when it shows up, that, the, that it will, when the man 
that he sowed for that day finally shows up. We know him as the Antichrist. When he finally shows up, he said, then the earth will say when he's draw, drugged down, is this the man that shook the kingdoms? Is this him? Hallelujah. I don't know if anybody's getting this or not. Maybe I'm too heavy today on location. What? Well, watch this in Jeremiah 4. So when that happened, verse 24, Jeremiah says, I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. And I beheld, and lo, there was no man. This all happened before the man. And all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness. And all the cities there were broken down at the presence of Yahweh and by his fierce anger. This was the harvest he got for singing the wrong song and sowing the hybrid seed. Man, I don't know. I don't know how powerful that is to you. Somebody give me a thumbs up on the chat as the partners with me on this. See, this is not so wild. I'm about to show you how this thing has followed through. And so you can see where we are. So he says, for this shall the earth mourn and the heavens above be black because I have spoken it. I have purposed it. Well, back up to verse 27 in Jeremiah 4. For thus hath the Lord said, the whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. For this shall the earth mourn and the heavens be black because I have spoken it. I have purposed it and will not repent, neither will I turn back from it. And so the first world before Adam imploded. But the scripture says this. Now we go back to Genesis 1. And I want you to see this. In Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's what we were just talking about. The beautiful. Because Isaiah 40 declares that God did not create it without form and void. He didn't create it in vain. Isaiah 40 declares he created it to be inhabited. You hear what I just said? To be inhabited. He created it for the man to come. And Lucifer did what he did. He was a murderer, Jesus said, from the beginning. Now, and the earth, verse 2, and the earth was, but that word was is the word became. And the earth became without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the abyss, or the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. But that word waters there means Death-filled, ignorant, death-filled, semen-filled waters, or in other words, seed-filled waters. And so then when God started saying, in verse 3, God said, let there be light, and there was light. He's recreating everything. It's just like this. Then he told Adam, watch what he told Adam in Genesis 1. Uh, 26 and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle over the earth all the earth over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and he says this so God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him this is after the recreation created he him male and female created he them and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. Watch this next line, and subdue it. Subdue it. But wait a minute. It's perfect, isn't it? Then what is there to subdue? To have dominion and subdue, put it down. What is he talking about? Because as soon as the light hit the earth again, as soon as it all hit the earth, then every seed laying in those dormant waters would start coming up and the seeds of that Lucifer sowed would begin to come up again. So, you know, it's the recreation because the sun, moon and stars began to give their light. They wasn't created there. So they just started giving their light again. Everything had went dark 
And so when, when the waters abated, they didn't abate here. They were rebuked in Psalm 104. In Noah's day, they'd slowly abated. But in this day, in Psalm 104, it said when God renewed the face of the earth, he rebuked the waters and they went back up into the streams and everywhere they should be. That's what's happening here. And so when this happens, he said, remember, when those told the man, when that those seeds start coming up of rebellion, you put it down. You put it down. Now think about it. So Adam failed to put it down. He didn't put it down. Watch this. So then it starts talking about this. In Genesis 3, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. God didn't say you couldn't touch it. He just said, Don't eat of it. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. It's an outright lie. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. In other words, you'll be woke. You'll be woke. Wait a minute. I thought that was just a phrase for today. No, no, no. It began right here. Woke. Your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were woke, were opened, and they knew they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. They began at that point to try to meet their own need without God. Can you you got to see this. So you have to ask yourself, see, the scripture says in the New Testament that the woman was deceived, but the man was not deceived. So Adam was not deceived. He committed high treason. Now, we have to ask ourselves some things. In a treasonous affair, which you can find in the story of the Good Samaritan, with the Samaritan, the Good Samaritan, uh, the, the man was going from Jerusalem to Jericho that the Good Samaritan had to rescue. He fell among thieves. He lighted among them. He joined them. And they stripped him, wounded him, left him half dead. Adam was left knowing good and evil. And they took his garments from him. Notice in that story, they didn't take his money. They took his raiment. They wanted the glory that covered the man. They wanted his authority. It's actually the story of Adam. And it carries all the way through to the coming of the Lord. Now, we won't get into that, but I want you to see this. So here he is. He cannot be deceived. So he committed treason. Now we see the serpent involved. We see uh, Satan couldn't get in that garden, but that serpent could. The serpent could. Now you have to ask yourself a question. In a treasonous coup, there's always something everybody wants to be tempted to do. What was it? We can only speculate about what Adam could have wanted to commit such treason. People just think, well, he just gave in to his wife. Well, there, there's probably a lot more to it than that. Because he was going down to Jericho in that story, which Jericho means the moon, and the moon is where the Jews taught that Satan's throne set on. They're talking about on that mountain. That's why Joshua had to take it first. This is a big thing going on, and we're all in, involved in this, this end time scenario. And so he comes down here, Adam, what did he want? Why did he commit treason? What was he after? I don't know. But he must have been going down to the moon to put down Satan's reign 
and put down all the seeds he had sown, and he joined these thieves. Now, what did Satan want? Well, we all we know what he wanted. He wanted to be like the Most High. He wanted possession of the earth. He wanted man's position. He wanted everything man could be. But to try to turn an angel into a man brought about a worldwide catastrophic flood. Amen. And so it disrupted everything from the spirit world to the natural frequencies, sounds, everything. It disrupted it all and imploded the earth. But he still wanted that. And that seed was still floating. So it was settled. It has to come up at some point. So what did, what did Satan offer that serpent? See, people think, well, the serpent was just used. He was just used. And so, you know, he was just a pawn possessed by the devil. No, he wasn't. No, no. The Bible was plain to say in the very first verse of chapter three in Genesis, he was more cunning. He was more cunning. The serpent himself had cunning about him. So he had a plan and he could decide something. So what could he be offered to go into the garden? Because Satan couldn't get in the garden. But what could he be offered to go into the garden and cause the fall of man? See, the serpent was the first Adam's Judas. The way Judas was, was the last Adam's Judas. He was his betrayer. So what could he have been offered? And if you want to know something that's really, really something about this to show you its own track. The first serpent was a beast of the field outside the garden. Judas wasn't a, a Jew. He wasn't an authentic Jew. He came from the Moabite side of the Jordan. He came from the other side. So he was a beast of the field outside the garden. He was a stranger. That's why they buried him in a field for strangers, the field called a seldoma, the field for strangers. So him and the serpent are the parallels. So why, what could the serpent have been offered to cause the overthrow of man? He was offered. The Lord himself revealed it in the prophecy. The seed, your seed, he told the serpent. If the serpent had just been deceived and used, the Lord would have never told him, you get a harvest for that. He decided. So what could he have been offered? Very simply, I will put enmity between thee, the Lord talking to the serpent, and the woman between your seed and her seed. He was offered the position of bringing in the Antichrist, letting it be part of his seed. He was offered that position. He was given that opportunity and he took it. And that's what happened. That's what happened. And you find after that, that it says when, fallen angels, sons of God, saw the daughters of men, they began to experiment. And if you read it in Hebrew meanings, you could see it. They began scientific experimentation to mutate and, and uh, do some kind of hybrid beings. And the seed was in the earth for it to happen. And the Lord said, your seed will get put down by her seed. And we see all these giants being formed. We see all the seed of the serpent, all the seed of the serpent. Now we've got an idea of what kind of uh, drugs and things they may have used to mutate humans in those days. Nimrod, the Bible said, began to be a gibberim. He began to be a giant. He began to do these things. Now we know probably where a lot of these creatures came from, trying to get to a super race. Hitler tried that, trying to create a hybrid race of people. 
And it's never changed. And now we're finding out that certain uh, of this uh, illness, I'll say, that's been perpetrated through the earth has the same components as serpent venom. Isn't it amazing? And it was amazing when I saw Biden hiss, lean over and hiss and talk in whispers. When I took a picture of him up close, his eye was golden looking brown and slotted like a snake. Some of you saw it. And we wonder what's happening. See, it's hard for civilized men to believe that all of this is surely this is not happening surely this is just fairy tales surely this is not really a going on right now. surely this is too far out to be happening really really what about Baal worship what about Baal worship from the very beginning Baal worship happened after Cain killed Abel that's when it really began to be lodged in the earth and it's always been a fight between God and Baal through the Old Testament It's always that. When the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea, the last fight they fought was over. God called out Baal Zephon, the God of the north wind, to come out. He crossed. He came across, Habakkuk says, right down uh, from from Teman, that region, and came across to the children of Israel and went right by Baal Zephon, the high place where Baal received children's blood and they offered children. It's always been a fight. Why do you think in 1973 uh, and so forth, when they begin to legalize the murder and the slaughter of the unborn? And why does Satanists take advantage of that and walk in and, and have rituals while they're offering children? Why did that all take? How come that it's the number one issue with the Democrat Party? How come it's always been the number one issue with them? How come? And why, when Hillary Clinton panicked, when she was running against uh, 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 Jehu, I'll say, because they're looking for trigger words to cut this off. How come when, when she was running against him and they were doing their debate, she just panicked and said, you can't vote for him. He'll, he'll stop Roe v. Wade. Well, it stopped, didn't it? Well, why did she panic? I heard a, a newscaster asked another one on the news that why do, is the Democrat Party so obsessed with abortion? This is his response. He don't know. Nobody else knows. But why is it so important to slaughter 40 million unborn a year worldwide? Why is that the big thing? Why is their body parts sold? Why is experiments done with uh, different parts of them? Why? Why did Hitler do experiments the way he did? Trying to create a super race? Uh Uh-oh. And now why is the components of a perpetrated, fabricated something that went through the earth? Why is it the same components now they're discovering as snake venom? Why? Why is all of that? You have to ask yourself, it's getting too real to be fake. It's getting too real to just be some kind of conspiracy. That seed was sown. And even the Lord himself said the serpent had a seed that was coming. But he said Jesus would put his seed down. But he hasn't gotten here yet. And the regimes have tried to put him, bring him forth, bring him forth, bring him forth. And now you know why he's called a, watch, beast. A beast. It's because he's not human completely. He's called a beast. Why did when Hillary Clinton ran for president, they brought out the Arch of Baal? Why blow up the temple of Baal in Palmyra, Syria, but save the arch until they could 3D print it, then destroy it? Why did they print a thousand of them? Why did they put them around? Why did they put them in? And why did did Boris Johnson dedicate one and demon spirits flew through it on camera, caught on camera? Why? Why did the, the president of Italy uh, our prime minister, whichever it was, dedicate one. Why are they showed? Did they show up everywhere? 
And all the arch of Baal is about was they called it, the, it was called the triumphal arch where they carried babies through it up to offer them in sacrifice. Why did that become the rallying cry? And you know what they called it? The arch of freedom. The arch of freedom. The arch of freedom. And what do you hear them scream about a woman's body? It's free. They should be free to do whatever they want to with their body. They are all referring to this. And you think I'm too far out. Nay. But this is a mystery that no, that people don't want to see. They don't want to look at. They don't want to look at. But our, our 11th hour team looks at it. Our 11th hour family around the world knows it's true. And you know in your spirit what I'm saying right now is true. And you see it start to advance. It advances. It advances. And now they're closer to bringing it to pass than ever before. CERN is involved in that big LHC in Switzerland, trying to open portals to let something come through. It almost came through this time, but they wasn't counting on uh, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of 11th hour warriors saying access denied. And it was after that storms hit everywhere. Did you notice that around the world they were hitting and the most hideous clouds with Faces in those clouds were looking down at the earth. They came right up to the brink of crossing, but they couldn't get through. Access denied. Now, this is a spiritual war I'm talking about. Now, you know, I mean, we could get up and, and preach a lot of things. But on the 11th hour, we talk about more than just the obvious. We must talk about what's being planned. Now, I want to show you something. I want to show you a, a video. Uh, now, I'm on remote, and we're doing everything we can to do this. But if we can show that video, I want you to listen to something. Now, before we get there, listen close to this. You have people like the WEF. I'll just abbreviate it, or you know who it is, and Klaus Schwab. And he has this false prophet with him. And they call him the prophet. But they won't put the word false in front of it. But that's what he is. That's what he is. He's a false prophet. And it's Yuval Noah Harari. And he, he prophesies what's coming. Now, if you think that I'm just making this up, why did Klaus Schwab go to Switzerland where the LHC is and begin to declare and ask yourself this, why did the, why did they dedicate their tunnel in the, at the LHC in Switzerland at CERN? Why did they dedicate that with a satanic ritual that came from hell up through to the earth when they broke in through another dimension and this, this, that wasn't a dramatization of something they want to be. That was the ritual done to open the portal. And they brought it up and they made it trying to create a body for it to happen. And they prophesied what was coming. Why would they use a satanic ritual? Why would they sh show such things as they show? Why? Why have a goat man break through from underground coming up on the earth? And why have the three big headed men bow down to it when it got out there? Why simulate lewd sex acts out there when a demonic spirit hits the men and women and they start stripping their clothes off? Why would they show humans in a cage chained in a wagon underground? Why? Why and, and, and not only that, why would world leaders sit in seats and applaud it? Folks, and now you've got the WEF meeting in Switzerland and somebody standing up like out of a, some kind of movie saying, we have the answer. You have the answer. All you very extremely wealthy people. Why don't he just say it? Now, these others are stupid, but we have the answer and we can dominate them. And we have to do it this way and this way. Why? Why would he say that? And set people 
that are just evil sitting on stage with him, all declaring the same thing. And it's so real that he's talking about a one world government that even Senator Rand Paul came out and said, this is evil. That you, or, or he, I don't know if he said evil, but he said, this is something. Let me show you what a one world government. He was against it completely. And it wasn't conspiracy. A U.S. senator said it. Called him out on it. I applaud the man for that. So why would he be talking about it? Why would he have that look on his face? Who is he? He shouldn't even have the wealth he's got. Who is he? See, it's getting set up now. This is what you're looking at. Why remove world leaders and why pick the only three that would have stood against it? You have Jehu, which is J. Trump. You have you have Netanyahu. He wouldn't have stood for it. So they removed him. They couldn't rig Putin's elections. So they created a, a fake proxy war where they killed real innocent people to drive him from office. Why? Because the, they're in the way. They're in the way of a one world government. So they drove Putin. They couldn't get. So they drove him to make the alliance of Ezekiel 36, 37, and so forth. They drove him to make the alliance of the God-Magog war. They drove him to start making these alliances. Why are they doing that? They are looking to shift this to the end time. They want to bring it in on their own. But Paul had a lot to say about that. He said that that uh, the hinderer is holding them back. The resistance is holding them back. They really believe, my brothers and sisters, that this is the moment the seed of the serpent will come on the scene. This is what they believe. This is it. They're about to make one more push to do it. Remember the scripture talks about that the beast will make an image of himself and cause that image to both talk and walk. And whoever wouldn't receive his mark to buy and sell. People say, oh, that could never happen, having to have a mark to buy and sell. Well, people, the people stood and locked their doors because they wouldn't put a face covering on because without it, you couldn't buy or sell. Well, it's like someone told me a while back. There's only one difference, one letter different in mask and mark. But both of them did the same thing. We've got to wake up right now. Now, just in case you think I'm, I'm making this up, I want you to watch this video and listen. This is the prophet, they call him. The false prophet of Klaus Schwab that is talking. And I want you to really pay attention to this now. And uh, I'll be right back as soon as you watch it. Now, really watch close. The only thing God's managed to create are organic uh, beings. All these trees and giraffes and humans, they are just organic. But we are now trying to create inorganic entities, inorganic life forms, cyborgs, artificial intelligence, and so forth. If we succeed, and there is a very good chance we will, then very soon we will be beyond the God of the Bible. See, did you notice that he said this? Uh, did we just show the one where he said the only thing God managed to create? Is that the one we showed? Somebody give me the thumbs up or not. Okay. I want you to notice what he said. And I, I had it transcribed word for word just so that you could hear it and know in case you missed a word or two. He said the only thing. Now, listen what this man said. The only thing God managed to create are organic beings. All these trees and giraffes and humans, they are just organic. 
He said, but we are now trying to create inorganic entities, inorganic life forms, cyborgs, artificial intelligence, and so forth. If we succeed, and there is a very good chance we will, then very soon we will be beyond the God of the Bible. Now, that's what this man said. Now, wait just a minute. Now, we need to analyze something on the 11th hour. I know that's kind of disturbing, isn't it? Watch this. Let's just say, and, and if I call somebody's name, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just pulling names out right here for a, a hypothetical thing. Let's just say somebody had a big corporation. Let's say I had a big corporation somewhere, and I had two employees I was looking at. And I said, you know, I'll tell you, the only thing Ted and Fred managed to create was a system by, uh, by which a system of promotion within the company we, where we could promote employees and give them incentives. That's the only thing Ted and Fred really managed to create in this company. Now, what does that say to you? That would say to you, that I know Ted and Fred, and I know what their accomplishments were. Oh, listen to what this man said. The only thing God managed to create are organic beings. Whoa, all these trees, giraffes, and humans, they're just organic. That sounds to me like somebody who knows him. Notice he didn't say he didn't exist. He said the only thing he managed to create was organic beings. All these trees, giraffes, and humans. That's a spirit talking. Do you not see? That's a spirit talking. This spirit has taken this man. Everybody see that, right? They ha he has to know him. He said he the only thing God managed to create. <laughs> he knows him. So what spirit could possibly have known God like that? He said the only thing he managed to create was our organic beings. Okay, hot rod. Let's see you create a toad. You just make an organic toad with flesh and blood. Notice that the thing that he's, he's against is flesh and blood. He can't get over that. He said, oh, the only thing God managed to create. Well, to start with, he didn't say there wasn't one. And if he's an atheist, why don't bring God into the picture? This is part of bringing in the seed of the serpent. This man would like to be the false prophet of the Antichrist. And he's talking, this spirit talking through this bozo knows God. He said, the only thing God managed to create are organic beings. All these trees, giraffes, and humans. In other words, he was impressed. Something about trees, giraffes, and humans impressed the spirit. It threatened him. It also says he's threatened by a God that can do that. So he immediately starts trying to take people's gaze from God and says, they're just organic. Just organic. Well, man, you can take a piece of iron and heat it up and melt it, and I can work with inorganic material. I mean, you, anybody can. You can forge something. You can beat a horseshoe out of something, out of melted lead and steel. You can make a horseshoe. But to create an organic something, man, that's something living. That's something that breathes. And he plays that down without ever saying God didn't exist. <laughs> it's that spirit. And it's made it from where we started in the scripture today to this time. A false prophet. Some of you heard me say on another program or a church program, I think it was. Maybe on one of the 11th hours, I said a false prophet are prophets that are set to bring in the prophecy of the seed of the serpent. 
that's set to bring in the Antichrist, prophesying his road to get here. So he goes on and says this, but we are now trying to create inorganic entities. Entities. He knows he can't be flesh covered crimson. So they're trying to create inorganic entities. Whoa, to merge machine and man. And they're doing it. And it makes you wonder in all these jabs going on, why there seems to be so much metal involved. And why did programs like this Star Trek thing they had create, it's called the Borg. It's all oh, that's just that's just and it was all linked up and every and they would say resistance is futile. Why would he say that? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's uh, maybe I'm you know, people say, well, you know, you're talking about a TV show and the word Borg. Well, Borg. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's, uh, trying to create inorganic entities, inorganic life forms, cyborgs. Whoa. Not so far out anymore artificial intelligence and so forth if we succeed he says and there's a very good chance we will then very soon we will be beyond the god of the bible who could by the way only create organic things <laughs> that's the ultimate thing isn't it that god created a man you know, it's like this to me. This is what I, this is what I, I, I. It's like the little story, you know, where where uh, science challenged God, and science said, uh, "We want to challenge you, God." Well, that's what He's doing. We want to challenge you, God. He said, "Well, okay, what? What are we going to do?" He said, "Well, um, uh, God said, okay, uh, we'll create a man. I'll create one. You make one." They said, okay, we can do that. And they went over there and started gathering up dirt and so forth. And the Lord said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You have to get your own dirt. <laughs> you have to get your own stuff to make him with. Well, see, now, now you've separated who's who. And they can't do that. Because, but did you notice this false prophet's words? He's not talking. He's saying we got to go beyond the God of the Bible. And he told you he, that God could only do certain things. The only thing he managed to create. That's a spirit talking. And that's a jealous one talking. Hallelujah. Now, we didn't do this other video, did we? Um, am I just reading it? Okay. In another video, um, the same false prophet said this. Listen to what he said. Uh, Science is replacing evolution by intelligent design, not the intelligent design of some God above the clouds. He said, but our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds. Remember what Lucifer said in Isaiah 14, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. But wait a minute now, let's see what he said here. He said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. So this thing, this guy is saying that uh, the intelligent design of some God, he mingled evolution. He said some God trying to confuse you that there's only one. But he says some. And he puts evolution in. He says some God above the clouds, he said, and the intelligent design of our clouds. He said, but our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds, the IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud. He said, these are the new driving forces of evolution. They are going to try to make a being. And try to get people. They're trying to bring the seed of the serpent into the now. And there's the false prophet trying it. Now you need to catch hold of this. And this is why we were fought so hard today. 
to keep this off the air. Hallelujah. So we have to begin to look at all of this. We have to look at what's going on. We have to, we have to start to see that this is happening. Hallelujah. We have to see this. So where does that put you and I? Well, we are, let's go over here to Second Thessalonians. We want to look at that. Second Thessalonians. And I want us to look at chapter 2. It says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word. As you see that, he said, I, I don't want you troubled by spirit. I don't want you shaken in your mind. Are troubled either by neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now the word falling away there is also translated as a catching away think of that well i don't know if i believe in that well that's one of the words for falling away is catching away now who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called god or that is worshiped wait a minute so now he, it says, when that man, there will be a catching away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is a God. He is God. Well, does that not sound like all of this? Sounds exactly like it. They're ready for it to happen. They're ready for it to come into being. That's why all the political upheaval. That's why this. That's why the, the inoculations. That's why everything that's going on. That's why there's suddenly one new one after another. That's why all this is happening. And that's why they did everything they could to, to take away what happened in this past uh, how can I say it? This past, when people cast ballots, I'll put it that way. Then he says this, verse 5, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity, see, this has all been a mystery. There's a lot could be said about it, but there was a lot said today about it. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. In other words, whoever's there's a group that is holding him back. And then shall that wicked one be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy him with the brightness of his coming. Do you hear what he said? He said, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. That's the prophetic word. The words that are coming forth now, the prophetic words, the proclamations, the prophecies, everything. He said, shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. It's going to be what we do in the prophetic words and the, pro the time of the prophetic and prophecy. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of, up, uh, of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this cause, God sent them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure 
and unrighteousness. Think about all of that. So we have come down to this point in time. And if you wonder what we're fighting, this is what we're fighting. We're fighting that mystery of iniquity. We're fighting to bring about, to resist, to keep our nation who was, that was given in covenant. There has to be one more worldwide revival. One more. And I honestly believe, honestly, as a prophet of the Lord, I believe that if we do this right, the Lord has shown me that he would grant us 40 more years. 40 more years. That's a generation. And I believe that's a generation in the scripture. And I believe that we are to stand now and resist. And all of this that has been wrong must be set right. Hallelujah. Well, it's been a heavy 11th hour today. It's been one we fought to get on the air to be able to talk to you, to be able to bring you this. Every way we turned, it was tried to stop us today. And the biggest thing could happen was just delays. But now it's out here and you've heard it. Hallelujah. And I'm, I want to thank you, partners, for showing up on the 11th hour. You always show up on the 11th hour. You, you, are, you are our partners. You are our 11th hour family. Hallelujah. Praise be God. Father, I ask you to give them eyes to see, ears to hear. Lord God, that what they've heard today, they will be able to walk in, live in, talk in, and respond the way you want them to respond. Protect them in every way all around the world and every nation. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Protect them in Argentina, Lord. Protect them there. Protect them, Lord. Protect Puerto Rico, Lord God, for those believers that are there. Lord, yes, Lord, even if there's 10, spare the cities for 10. In Jesus' name. Lord God, I ask you to bring an invasion to Switzerland, an invasion to disrupt everything the enemy's doing. And I give you praise for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, I want to give you opportunity to give today if you'd like to give. Krista's not uh, in here today to, to receive the offering, but I want to extend the offering to you. If you would like to give today, then we will receive it into good ground. I pray over you every day, and I will be praying over you today at some point, today or tonight, and I want to. I want you to commit to pray for us. And, and you showed that, and I was so moved and so touched when you said today that we'll wait all day. We'll hold up your arms. I, I cried about that. that. That touched me so that you would hold up my arms while I'm trying to bring the word of the Lord to the people. You know, so if you'd like to give, you know, we've put something into motion in Luke 6, 38. He says, if you give, it's given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. This is what it declares. Notice it said, give one time. And it said, receive seven times. You know, the Lord wants you to prosper. Why would he want you to prosper so? He wants you to prosper so that you can, you can do things like this 11th hour program so that we can take the gospel to the world so that you and your family can be taken care of so you be strong in the power and, and, the, and the Lord and the power of his might that you can walk and preach and teach and pray for others. And intercede for your nation, your communities, and your churches. Hallelujah. So he said, give. Notice that one time. And it shall be given unto me. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. And running over shall men give unto your bosom. This is give once, receive seven times. That's God's way. If you sow a seed. Say, you know, I grew up as a little boy. I watched them plant corn and stuff like that. And 
you could put in a kernel of corn in the ground. You know, we always dropped in two or three, but you could put in one kernel of corn in the ground. It grow a stalk seven feet high, five ears to every stalk, 750 kernels to every ear off of one kernel. That shows you what God is just is pouring out when we give. That's his whole government. That's his system. So, Lord God, pour it back on them good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, that men give unto their bosom. Lord, and for the tither, if they're tithing, Lord, people say, well, I, I don't believe in the tithe. You, you don't have to tithe. I have to tithe. But people say, well, I don't, I don't believe you have to tithe. You know, I just tell people, you, you know, you do what you want. And when I say you don't have to, what I mean is, is you don't have to obey anything God says if you don't want to. You know, that's not a very wise thing to do. But he teaches tithing from the beginning when Adam was to give the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil as his tithe so that the other trees would produce free. That's that's the tithe. They started there. And Jesus said, you tithe certain things. And he said, this you should do. Don't let people talk you out of prospering. Don't let them talk you out of not tithing. Hallelujah. But you know, if people want to get mad about it. I don't want to tithe. Well, just don't. But don't try to talk me out of it. Because I know it works. So here's a promise of the tither, Malachi chapter 3. You know that promise. We can quote it, but let's read it right here. So we read it right out of the word, Malachi 3. And we'll look at verse uh, 10. Let me get let me get right there with you. I, I want us to see this. Hallelujah. Sometimes, you know, we just don't need to just start quoting things. Man, we need to put our eyes on it. We could pull that up on the screen. I think they can do that. From the fortress. Hey, my page is not to stick together here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here it is. Check this out. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. What is a tithe? A tithe is simply a tent. He said, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now or test me now. It's the only place really in scripture that God ever says for you to test him on something to see what he'll do. Because people are so, you know, people have been taught that it don't make any sense that if you give, it's multiplied back to you. But you don't have a problem believing that people don't when you put a C, a, a kernel of corn in the ground that it will be given back. So listen to what he says. He says, bring ye all the tithes, not just part of it, all of it. You know, Abel offered a tenth of his flock, the firstlings of his flock, or his tithe, in other words, and the fatty choice cuts of meat, which was an offering. He said, bring it all into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. A tithe is simply a tenth. A dime is a tithe of a dollar. A dollar, the tithe of ten dollars. Ten dollars, the tithe of a hundred dollars. Dollars, the tithe of a thousand dollars. On and on it goes. Where should I tithe, Brother Robin? Wherever you're fed. Wherever you're fed is where you should tithe. He said that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. Man, there's that word windows. That's the same word windows that was in Noah's day when the windows of heaven were open. And that shows you now what saved Noah. Noah was a tither. That's why he offered a sacrifice as soon as the ark landed. He said, if I'll not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord. That's God in his system of harvest, all capital Lord, of host, of the organized armies, 
So there's an angelic army that fights for you when you tithe. Think about it. Rescue comes from the tithe. All of this happens with the tithe. And in the days of Elisha, when they said, this abundance you prophesied won't come to pass, except the windows of heaven would be open. Well, that's what happened. They were opened and an abundance came. So as you tithe, I want to pray this over you now. You ready? Lord, and I want you to say this out loud with me. Say, Lord, as I bring all my tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. I prove you now herewith, Lord, Lord of hosts. If you will not open me the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And and rebuke the devourer for my sake, that he not destroy the fruits of my ground. Neither shall my vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And now say this out loud. You ready? And all nations, this is verse 12, shall call me blessed, for I shall be a delightsome land saith the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. 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 Man, the Lord goes on to say in this same chapter, he says, your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken so much against thee? Ye have said it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we kept his ordinance? And that we walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. Think about that. He said, you've robbed me. He said, your words have been stout against me. And then you find out over here in, in verse 8, he said, you, will a man rob God? This all goes all the way back to Adam, the word man. Yet he said, you've robbed me. But you say, how? Where have we robbed thee? He said, in tithes and offerings that you've robbed God from being able to bless you. He said, don't let your words be stout against him. He is prospering you through the offerings and the tithe. Your covenant begins with the tithe. Hallelujah. So I want to thank you for giving today. If you have such a mind to give today, and we will take it and use it in the ministry in the best way possible. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. I speak the blessing of the Lord over you today uh, from your coming in to your going out. Be blessed. Be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in, blessed going out. Blessed is your basket in your store. Be blessed. Be blessed with the blessing of Eden, the blessing of Abraham that came on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. I say be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed with the blessing of the Lord that makes you rich and he adds no sorrow to it. Hallelujah. Until next time we gather together right here around God's word on the 11th hour, I want you to remember that God is absolutely good. Shalom and shalom.